I picked up this huge reclaimed wood desk out of someone's trash a few months ago when our town hosted a bulky item garbage pickup day, and I've been a little stumped on what to do with it flip-wise. It's actually a fairly new piece of furniture that's still available for purchase online, but the one I had was a little bit wobbly because the welds on the metal legs just didn't hold up to the weight of the top. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this desk, a brand new, much more sturdy base out of some pine two by twos from the hardware store. And then I'm going to show you how I went about listing this for sale online. I did a Google image search on this desk and found it still for sale between $2,000 and $2,300, which seems like a lot when we're dealing with furniture from the trash, but being in the industry, I know that there are lots of people who very willingly and very regularly spend that sort of money and more to decorate and furnish their homes. This one wasn't brand new though. The metal legs on one end were barely holding things up and it was filthy from being out here in my garage for months, but I was confident that I could build a strong new base, sell it and turn it into a healthy profit for my business. Since the desk had this gorgeous rustic reclaimed pine aesthetic, I thought that instead of replicating the black look again, I could build a new sturdier base out of wood and then try and match the rough white waxed finish. I flipped the desk onto its back so that I could see what I needed to remove the base pieces and then got started undoing things. L brackets didn't look original to me. I think that the previous owner must have attempted to fix these broken welds, but this didn't end up doing the trick. I measured out the length, width, and height of these pieces and then drew them out on some paper so that I could replicate the same thing out of my wood. And I decided that I would probably put in an extra support or stretcher bar as well to connect the two sides of the base together so that that one leg wasn't just floating out there all alone, flapping in the wind. <laughs> Once I'd figured out what I needed, which was the length and width measurements minus one and a half inches on each end to accommodate the leg in each corner because two by twos are only actually an inch and a half, I grabbed my two by two by 10 and wandered out to the driveway where Mr. Salvage had our miter saw working on some softening. I measured out my front and back pieces, the two side pieces and all four legs and chopped each section off the board as I went. Once I had everything cut down, I laid it all out on my bench to make sure all the measurements were right. And then I marked out where I wanted to add some pocket holes to start attaching things together. I decided on one screw in each joint and then I'd add a metal bracket to the inside of those corners for insurance. Now I am not a carpenter and I know that there's definitely a fancier way to do this, but this is what I know how to do and I'm confident that this is gonna be strong enough. So this is how I went. Next, I grabbed my Craig Jig pocket hole kit and set the guide to the one and a half inch measurement since I'm drilling into one and a half inch boards. I clamped that down on the end of each board and then used the bit that comes in the jig kit to drill all my holes.
Once I had everything drilled, I grabbed a scrap piece of wood and used it to help me hold the leg to the board with those clamps so that I could screw things in without anything moving out of line. totally forgot to glue up my first joint, so I had to unscrew it, add some wood glue, and try again. It happens. Once I had the two end sections together with the legs or the front and the back of the frame, I screwed two more pieces of scrap together to create this corner jig for myself so that I could clamp both sides of things tight and hold everything in line while I got those screws in as well. Then when I had my rectangle together, I grabbed these L brackets from my stash of random furniture hardware that I've saved over the years, marked out the holes, drilled some pilot holes so that my screws didn't split the pine, and screwed them into the inside of each corner. For the taller leg frame on the other side of the desk, I did the same thing. I made myself a plan on paper with all of the measurements, chopped up another two by two and laid it out to make sure it was right. Then I marked out where I wanted to place my pocket holes. I put them in the bottom of this support rail and then on the top side of the top bar so that they were hidden. And then I started drilling my pockets again a little more wood glue, and this time I used my corner jig on the inside of the corners to help me hold things together. And in not too much time, I had another new frame. So to connect these two new pieces and give that end leg a little more help, I wanted to add another piece of wood across the back. So I figured I should probably install the two pieces that I'd already built so I could properly measure how long I needed that brace piece to be. So I called Mr. Salvaged away from his afternoon beverage break to help me flip the desk over on its top. I lined my new pieces up to match where the original pieces sat and then used a countersink bit to drill some new holes and screw my new pieces in place.
Doug was invested at this point. So he did the measuring. I cut down the board. He drilled the pocket holes, measured the height we needed to attach that bar at, and then clamped these lifesaver cut off pieces to hold things while he got it attached at both ends. A few more metal brackets on the back side to reinforce things and ta-da, we have a new base. I still needed to make the finish match the rest of the desk though, so I unscrewed everything to make it easier on myself to get that done. Hardware Store Pine is already pretty distressed, but I wanted to add a little bit more character, so I just grabbed a screw and gouged it up in a few more spots, and then I gave the frame a quick once-over with some 180 grit sandpaper just to make sure nothing was too rough and remove any splinters that were hanging out on the corners of the wood. To try and match the color, I grabbed a couple of water-based wood stain options out of my supply cabinet and brushed on a mix of this orange-toned English chestnut and then put a layer of some more brown special walnut over top, which landed me on this color. And since there are so many different shades happening on this thing, I felt like I had a lot of room in here to get creative and nothing really needed to be too perfect. But then to get that white waxed look, I grabbed a can of Chateau by Fusion Mineral Paint just because it was the first white I saw in my cabinet. And I dipped the tip of my chip brush into the paint dabbed off a lot of the excess onto some paper towel and just dragged that over the wood kind of randomly. Again, I didn't need to worry about being perfect. I just played around with this until it looked right. I vacuumed up all of the mess that I'd made on the bottom of the desk, screwed my new base back in place, and then asked for help one more time to flip it the right way up so that I could start cleaning the top. These handles were all covered in paint overspray from another project of mine. I totally did this to myself. So to get that off of there, I used some 4 aught steel wool just to scrub them down or polish them up, whichever you prefer. And then to clean up the rest of the desk, I sprayed it down with some Simple Green all-purpose cleaner and grabbed my new favorite tool or toy, this scrub brush drill attachment. This thing is so much fun. When I was done with my power scrubbing, which is so satisfying, I wiped everything down with some clean water and also gave the inside of the drawers a really good clean. To bring back the shine on the top of the desk and add some protection to my new base on the bottom, I used this clear furniture wax from Bear. It's super easy to use. You just rub it into the wood with a stiff bristled wax brush and then I came back with a clean microfiber cloth to buff it, just like waxing a car. I got those handles back in place and then we dragged this behemoth of a desk inside the house for its glamour shots on my very fancy staging wall in our kitchen. I use my iPhone for all of my furniture photography and like 99% of the filming that you see here on the channel. So here is my exact technique for photographing a piece for sale. This is really large, so I zoomed out for the overall head-on shot, and then I switched into portrait mode to get the rest of the detailed photos. My main photo when I'm selling something is always head-on sitting right in front of the piece. Then I'll get the sides, a few detail shots showing the texture, the condition of the drawers, and any cool hardware. I'll also crop all of these down to a square format for Facebook and get rid of the broom in the background and anything else that I don't want seen.
since this desk is still for sale online today for between $2,000 and $2,300 Canadian, I think I'm safe to price mine at the higher end of things for me. I think if I were to walk onto the sales floor at Costco right now and see this desk, people would be loading it up under their cart for seven or $800 all day long, no questions asked. And although I don't think I can get that much, I think I'm gonna price mine around $5.95. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do $5.95. It might take a few weeks, but I think in my market, I can get $5.95 for it. I'm gonna post my good photos with a detailed description that outlines all of the information and terms that I want potential buyers to know. And I'm also gonna add the listing to as many local buy and sell pages as it will let me so that it's got the greatest potential of being seen. Selling on Facebook isn't easy, but sales anywhere isn't easy. It's a full-time job on its own. And there are always going to be tire kickers, low ballers, and scammers that you have to manage. But this is the strategy that has worked best for me and the way that I wanna run my business. Okay, it's listed. I will keep you all updated in the comment section of this post on how this sale ends up going but I wanna say thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. I hope that you learned something or at the very least were entertained for a little bit. I'll leave a few more videos here for you to watch next if you're interested and I will catch you all next time.